Welcome back to Econ 103, Introduction to Microeconomics. In this video, we're going to do a walkthrough of a quota. That is the case where our producers are able to form an alliance either legally, the government has given them the right to do so, typically through self-regulation, in order to limit their production and push up the price. What we're going to do in this is we're going to figure out, hey, what is that price that they get to charge? What is that production amount that they're going to limit to? And then we're going to conduct a surplus analysis. That is the welfare analysis, figuring out, hey, what's our consumer, producer, social surplus before at our allocatively efficient equilibrium, and then look at what it is after underneath the quota. Now, the expectation with this walkthrough is that you have already watched our price control video. So you've already seen the basics of the theory of it and you've okay working it out and you know what a quota is in theory. In this case, we're going to be computationally looking at it, going through the math side again, making sure you're good on that bit. Additionally, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the equilibrium already solved and with the initial equilibrium surplus already solved for. If you are having a little bit of troubles with that and you want to go back and review it, if you go back to the walkthrough for a price floor, I go through the initial solving of the equilibrium and the initial surplus situation. Okay, let's jump over and let's take a look at our quota. So as we see, we have initially our equilibrium set up here. So we have all together our, as listed for us, our demand equation, our supply equation. So demand, supply. We have our market clearing price of 70 and our quantity exchange of 20. Great. Equilibrium, allocatively efficient. We then have our consumer surplus being calculated as that top triangle of 400. And we have our producer surplus being calculated as the bottom triangle there of 600. Together, these guys yield for us consumer, producer, a social surplus of 1,000. So again, if you have troubles, if you're not sure where that 70, where that 20 comes from, if you're having troubles in figuring out how to calculate these surpluses, jump back to the other video, video of the walkthrough on price floors, and I explicitly go through the calculation of all of these bits. Same numbers and everything. That's where this all comes from. Okay, but what about our quota? In all of our other scenarios, we've been taking a look at price controls, that is the government setting a specific price that has to be charged. In this scenario, this is more supply management, and what we are doing is we are restricting the amount supplied, restricting the quantity produced. So keep in mind, our market wants to charge, or is not wants to charge, wants to produce 20 units. In this scenario, we're gonna limit our production and we're going to limit our production to 10 units. So I'm just going to draw a line straight up through everything and put that at 10. This here, this is my quantity under our quota. Okay. Keep in mind that at this quantity, we're going to have two things that are going to result from this. We're going to have at this quantity, we're going to have Quantity of 10 up to my supply, that's going to give me my minimum willingness to accept. That's the lowest price that our producers would be willing to accept in order to produce 10 units. Keep in mind, we can also think of this alternatively, our other interpretation of our supply curve was our marginal cost. That is the extra cost to produce that 10th unit. We also have, if we take this 10 all the way up to our demand curve, bring that guy across, we're gonna have our maximum willingness to pay. That is the most we'd be willing to pay to buy 10 units. And again, using all of our interpretations of the demand curve, this could also be thought of as the marginal benefit. The extra benefit I received for consuming that 10th unit. Okay, so that gives us our kind of walkthrough as to what's happening with our quota. Well, what we now need to do is actually go through and solve it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna solve for the willingness to pay, we're gonna solve for the willingness to accept, and then once we solve for both of them, we're gonna identify what is the market clearing price 
under the quota. That is whatever is actually going to get charged in this market. Once we have willingness to pay, willingness to accept, determination of the market clearing price all determined, we will then go and conduct our welfare analysis. We'll calculate our consumer, producer, and our social surplus. So let's get started. To begin, let's start off at the bottom. Let's take a look at calculating our willingness to accept or the marginal cost. How do we do this? Well, let's just take a look at the diagram and we're taking 10 up to our supply curve to get these values. So in order to get that value, I want to invoke my supply function. So let's bring that in. Price equals 10 plus 3Q. Okay, I have two unknowns. I have the price, which is what I want to solve for, and I have the quantity, which in this case isn't an unknown. That's going to be the 10. That's going to be very much known. That's what I'm trying to figure things out under. So price is 10 plus 3. Let's substitute in our quantity for our quota, 10. So what do I get? I get price equals 10 plus 3 times 10. That's going to be 30. So altogether, I get a price of 40. Okay, price of 40, what is this price again? Well, we just calculated this price from our supply curve. So 10 up to the supply to get a price. That was my willingness to accept. Let's just make some room and we'll write down the actual value instead of what it is. There we go. We have 40 as our willingness to accept. Go through, same kind of idea, 10 all the way up to our demand, we'll get our willingness to pay or our marginal benefit. So again, that was 10 up to our demand. So let's invoke our demand formula, our demand function. So our demand function is price equals 110 minus 2Q. Again, two unknowns in the formula. Price is what we're trying to figure out. And quantity, ah, that's actually not unknown. That is our 10 from our quota. So price is 110 minus 2 times 10. So what do we get? 110 minus 20. We're going to have a price of 90. Again, where does this price go? We just calculated a price, but what does it mean? Well, okay, we only have one thing left on our axis, not determined, willingness to pay marginal benefit. But if it weren't for that case, how would we know? Again, we would know because we were just utilizing our demand formula. So we went quantity up to demand across to get our price. So again, let's update that. That gives us a price of 90. Okay. So we have everything listed on this part here. We have our minimum willingness to accept. We have the market clearing price if we were just at our allocatively efficient equilibrium. And we have our willingness to pay, the highest price that our consumers would be willing to pay in order to buy 10 units. Between these three prices listed, what is going to be the market clearing price underneath the quota? Well, in this scenario, as producers restrict their quantity, they're restricting their quantity in order to charge a higher price. And that higher price that they will charge will, of course, be the highest price they're capable of charging, which is the willingness to pay. So we take this 10 up to our demand curve all the way across to 90. And we get 90 as our, uh, see if I can write that down, price quota, PQ, price under the quota. So that's our new price that we are stuck dealing with. So now that we figured these out, next step is to conduct our welfare analysis, compute consumer, producer, and our social surplus. So let's go jump over and see how we do that. We're writing them out to start out. We have our consumer surplus one, producer surplus one, and social surplus one. Again, using a different color to denote they're different than our original case, and the subscript one to say it's my new one. Okay, let's start off with our consumer surplus. So for my consumer surplus, reminding ourselves what that is, it's the difference between what I was willing to pay, that's my demand curve, up until the quantity exchanged, 
below, or sorry, rather above the price I actually had to pay. So below what I was willing, above what I had to, up to our quantity exchange. So I'm going to get that little blue shaded in triangle there as my consumer surplus. So triangle, oh, we know how to figure that out geometrically. That's just one half base times height. Well, my triangle, that has a base of 10. And that is a height of 110 minus 90. Well, 110 minus 90, that's a height of 20. So in this case here, consumer surplus, that's going to work out to be $100. One half times 10 times 20 gives me 100. What about my producer surplus? Well, in this scenario, producer surplus is above my willingness to accept up to the quantity exchanged below the price I do accept. So below the actual price that we have. So I get this whole really awkward looking shape all together here. But let's keep in mind that although it would be very difficult to find out the area of this shape as it stands, I can always break this shape imp into different shapes. That is, I can break it up into a rectangle and a triangle. So again, where is that rectangle? Where is that triangle? Well, I have my rectangle right here and I have my triangle right there. So I can break it up into these two subsequent shapes calculate the area of each one independently, and then add the two together to get my total producer surplus. So let's do that. Starting off with the rectangle base times height. Well, again, I'm gonna have a base of 10, and I'm gonna have a height of 90 down to 40. That's gonna be a height of 50. I'm then gonna have my triangle. That's one half base times height. So again, base of 10. Height in this case is 40 down to 10, so a height of 30. What do I get in each case? 10 times 50, that gives me 500. One half base times height, that's going to give me 150, giving me altogether 650 as my producer surplus. My social surplus then? Well, the social surplus is just the surplus earned by all of our agents acting in this market. In this scenario, we just have our consumers and our producers. So consumers plus producers, 100 plus 650, that gives me $750 of total social surplus. What happened to that loss? What's the difference there? Well, that difference, that is my deadweight loss, and that is 250. How does this deadweight loss show up in our diagram? Where is that geometrically? Well, that deadweight loss, that is going to be our brown triangle here. This is the portion of consumer and the portion of producer surplus that used to be realized, but is now lost altogether due to the implementation of this policy. We had an allocatively efficient market at a market clearing price of 70 and a quantity exchange of 20. We interfered, we put in this quota, and now as a result, we have an inefficient outcome. We have a loss of surplus altogether. Now, of course, what we're going to have is winners. We're going to have losers. We're going to have some of our agents being better off underneath this policy, some of them being worse off, and we want to figure out those distributional impacts. So to start off, let's take a look at consumers. Consumers used to earn a surplus of 400. They're now earning 100. So clearly in this scenario, consumers are worse off. They have lost as a result of this. Producers used to earn 600, they're now earning 650. So in our scenario here, our producers, they are better off. They have won because of this policy. Finally, overall society used to have $1,000 worth of surplus, now is only receiving 750. So society on whole has lost because we've enacted this quota. So consumers and society lose, producers win underneath our quota scenario. Okay, so that was our quick walkthrough of the quota. Through this, we've calculated our willingness to pay, our willingness to accept, and we've identified the quota price. 
We have then gone through and we've conducted our welfare analysis. We've calculated our consumer surplus, our producer surplus, and our social surplus. And we've worked out our deadweight loss. We identified our winners. We identified our losers. If you have any questions from this, feel free to comment in the, que in the comments below. Or, of course, leave a comment in the Frequently Asked Questions board on D2L. Or, of course, feel free to send me an email. Thanks. Until next time.